Ravi Dasan was the first to become self-conscious among those who marveled at the galloping horses. Devi! This fake Vaishnava has shown his work. This is one, don't trust him. I have warned them many times. He has brought his men to catch us. But he cannot catch us. Even his god Narayana cannot come. Let's go. Let's climb the mountain before the horses come. Said the magician. All Workadians said, Nandini. Don't go with these bad guys. Enough of all the accidents that happened because you joined them. He said. Nandini looked at all Workadian and said, Tirumala. I have been hearing something for a long time, do you remember it? I was begging you to take me to my mother. Now if you promise to take me to my mother, I will come with you, otherwise I will go with them. Nandini. I can't do that anymore. Ravi Dasan interrupted before Tirumala said, What is he going to take? I'm going to take, come. He said. Yes, yes, he will take you to Yamaloka to your mother. He will kill you and send you to Yamaloka as he killed your mother. Nandini. You don't want the company of these evildoers anymore. One of these killed your mother. Look at the witch's face. It says murderer. All Workadians said. Ravi Dasan, with anger on his face, shouted, Lie! Lie! He shouted. Nandini's eyes, which had been calm a moment ago, showed signs of rage. Tirumala! Is this true? Is my mother really dead? Will I never see her again? She said. If in doubt, ask this woman and find out. One of these, Saman Sambhavan, was the one who threw the vine and killed your mother, she saw it with her own eyes. She followed her aunt's killer. Punguzali. Tell me. All Workadians said. Yes. I saw it with my own eyes. I came here to avenge my aunt's killer. Said Punguali. Nandini laughed madly. Have you come to take revenge? Blame. Blame. Isn't the symbol of my revenge enough? After saying that, he looked at Ravi Dasan and said, Traitor. Santa. Did you do this? She said. Queen. You think wrong. I have committed no treachery. Saman Sambhava threw a job at the emperor. The dumb madwoman fell across and died. Her fate. What do you say now? Are you going to come with us, or not? Behold, the horses are approaching. He said. Nandini didn't seem to heed his words. Suddenly she sat down. She covered both eyes with both hands. Vimy cried as her whole body shook. Laughter was mixed with crying. Ravi Dasan looked at his men and said, Run. Run and climb the mountain. It is no use trusting the queen anymore. Everyone ran. Ravi Dasan said, Vaishnava. Inda, reward for your poison. Saying that, he hit Vaishnava on the head with the stick in his hand and ran away. Alvarkadian said, Namo, Narayana. He said and rubbed his head once. All those who ran entered the mountain cave. For a while they stopped near the point where the Connery River falls into a waterfall on the top of the cliff above the cave. At the same time the horses arrived at the foot of the hill. It took so long for the horses to arrive because of the huge boulders lying everywhere without a proper path. All Workadian noticed that among those who came on horses, those who had come in front were small pickers and ghastly. Behind them, Sendan saw a muffin on a horse tied together with a rope. Come. Come. You have come at the right time, he said. Chinapula Vetare and Kanamaran jumped down from their horses. Their attention was first on Nandini, who was sitting down and whimpering. Gandamaran went near Nandini. He tried to say something but no words came out of his mouth. The small farmer looked at Alvarkadian and said, Vaishnava. How did you come here? Why did you come? He asked. Commander. I have come in search of him whom you have brought. The great predator is in that cave. He said. Really? Alive. 
asked the little gardener eagerly. Yes, he's still alive. Isn't Yama too afraid to approach his Tamayaner? That's why those murderers' efforts didn't work in their Tamayaner's case. After saying that, he pointed to Ravidasan and others who were standing on the top of Tirumala Hill. Who are they? Why do you call them murderers? They are the sorcerer Ravidasan and his gang, members of Veerapandaya's danger squad. They are the ones who tried to kill the emperor. They are the sinners who killed Prince Aditha Kari Kalar. Said Thirumalai. Kanthamaran interrupted, Lie, lie. Vandiyadeva is the one who killed the prince. Are you trying to hide the crime committed by your friend? He said. Idiot. Shut up. The little reaper scolded him. Then looking at Vaishnava, he asked, Did they try to kill Thanadikari too? How did he escape? He asked. He only escaped with the help of the young queen of Palvur, who is sitting here whimpering. Why is the younger queen crying? He hears that his mother is dead. That's why he's crying. Shouldn't this be investigated later? Yes, yes. I must see the great reaper first, you go and tell him I've come. Even then, the respect of the little Pulave Tere for his master did not wane at all. So suddenly he hesitated to go and see Tamayanar. Sir. Their father will never go anywhere. I will go and tell them that they have arrived. Are you not going to do anything to catch those murderers? The little reaper pressed his forehead with his hand and said, Yes, yes. This is how my wits once failed me. I let the emperor's assassin flee. Said. He hasn't escaped either, he's just over that hill. Order your men quickly. Immediately the commander Kalanthe Kakandar looked at the soldiers who came with him and gave the order. They got down from their horses and went near the place where the Connery River cascades down from the cliff. When they got there, huge boulders started falling from above. The soldiers moved around hastily to avoid the stones falling on their heads. Both were hit by stones and fell down. Do you know how they got up there? Asked the small gardener. He asked. They climbed into the cave. There seems to be a secret passage in the cave. Come, let's go and see. All were Katayan went first. Kalantagakangdar and Kanamaran followed. A tall majestic figure staggered out of the cave. It stood at the cave entrance and stared at the approaching men. It took some time for the younger brother to recognize Tamayanar. When he recognized the big pule of Etere, whose face was white with wounds all over his body, and who was lying dead, the little pule of Etere said, Brother. He screamed and hugged the big reaper. Tears welled up in his brother's eyes. His mouth said, Brother. You've warned me many times. I'm screwed. It murmured in a soft voice. At that time Alvarkadian and Kanamaran tried to enter the cave. The great reaper stopped them and asked, Where are you going? He asked. Assassins entered this cave. Which murderers? Magician Ravidasan and his minions. They are not murderers, said the great scavenger. See? Didn't I say Vandiyathevan was the murderer? Said Kanamaran. The big scoundrel stared at him and said, How did this stupid boy end up here? Said. It was Kandamaran who brought the news from Kadampur. What news? He has brought the news that Prince Karagalar is dead. Sambuvarayar has sent a message through him that we must gather our forces immediately and arrange for Madhurand Hagar to ascend the throne. Aha! Really? said the great reaper with little enthusiasm. Then, how is the situation in Tanjavur? He asked. Brother. Be specific. You are very weak. Can we please sit down and talk? said the small gardener. The officer sat at the entrance of the cave. Sir. If you give us some space, we can go inside the cave and see if there is a way to climb the cliff, said Vaishnava. What for? said the great reaper. Ravidasan's team entered this cave and climbed up the hill, said Thirumalai. The great hunter shook his head and said, It's no use going into the cave, father. 
They've rolled the rock from above and blocked the way to the cave. The rock was going to fall on me. It's a godsend that I'm alive. Go. Go, both of you. See if there's another way to climb the mountain. Said. When all Alwarkadian and Kanamaran went beyond, the vision of the great gardener fell on Sendan Amuthan and Pungazali. Who are they? Where did they come from? He asked. That woman was Bunguzali, the daughter of Vidangar, who sacrificed her life. She came looking for the killer of her aunt. Synthan Amuthan came in search of her. It was Synthan Amuthan who showed us the way and we came here and found ourselves. Said the small gardener. Tell me in detail what happened in Tanjavur. Said the great reaper. Chinapulvatarayar used to say the same thing. One of the sorcerers in the crowd told them that he was hiding in the treasure dungeon and that he had set his sights on killing the emperor and that goddess Mandakini had intervened to save him. Then he continued. At the gate of the emperor's palace, it was known that the elephant was Prince Arulmas Hivarma. I was a little scared and left. Elder brother. The little prince must have some magical power. When I saw his face, my hands and feet were hot. The heart is relieved. Without realizing it, my hands were shaking. He has to be worshipped and welcomed. Aren't you surprised that the people of the Chola country are shouting for Prince Arulmas Hivarmar without knowing their head and feet? Enough is enough. That is known. I thought that Arulmas Hivarman drowned in the sea was a myth. Then tell me what happened. Why did the prince come into the castle disguised as an elephant? Asked the reaper. If the villain of Kajumbalar knows that he is the prince, he will stop him. He will not let him enter the fort. He thought that villain's soldiers would also make a big demonstration, so he came in disguise. Until then, the prince must be praised. The murderer threw Vel from above when the prince was meeting and talking with the emperor. Ungodly it was that she died falling on the dumb madman. If he had died falling on the emperor, our clan would have been tainted forever. The great corruptor said under his breath, Isn't there a stain now? What? There are endless fields. He muttered. Brother. What did you say? Asked Kalanthay Khandar. Nothing, tell me what happened above. Said the officer. Then a great miracle happened. The emperor, who had been unable to walk for a long time, suddenly got strength in his legs. He ran and took the mute in his lap and began to wail. For a while we all stood in awe of the scene. It was this runner named Pungujali who shouted, I am going to catch the murderer ran with. She must be good. It is through her that we have the privilege of seeing ourselves today at least in this sphere. Tears filled the eyes of the great Palyavatare, brother. I have heard of Tamayan in the Puranic legends about pious brothers. But there can be no brother as pious as you. Let him go, then tell me what happened. Said. Following Pungujali I went to the tunnel in the treasure dungeon. There I seized a man in the dark. I thought he must be the murderer. When I heard the voice, I knew it was Mad Hurandik Deva. Why did he come down the dungeon path? I didn't know that either and I didn't give a proper answer to the question. I was afraid someone would suspect that he was the murderer. Maybe that's the truth, or what? So Velir Force snipers started coming in by breaking the fort gates and jumping over the walls. On hearing this news, 10,000 soldiers had already entered the fort before I reached the fort gate. Our soldiers are about 2,000. They fought fiercely with the outsiders, and I went and gave orders to stop the fighting. I have collected all our players in one place. Deciding that it was no use staying inside the fort any longer, I marched out with our soldiers. Velir and Kaikalar forces tried to stop us. We cut down all those who stopped us and killed them. At least for the members of the Bhavurg family, I sent a message to Buthavikrama Kesari saying that even if there is even a small harm to Madhuran Thakdeva, I will destroy the Kajumbalar dynasty. Then I hastened to join them thinking that they would be at Katapur. On the opposite bank of Kudamuryudi River, Kanamaran flew and fell on his horse. Pavur stopped when he saw the palm vine, 
and the news he brought made me even more astonished. He said that it had been a few days since they had left Kadampur for Tanjore, and that the great Sambuvarayar had sent them a message. He was also stunned when he found out that they never reached Tanjore. Then I asked him what message Sambuvarayar had sent. That Prince Karikalar is dead and Vandiyadava has killed him, therefore, the great Sambuvarayar said that this is the right time to install Madhurand Hakativar on the throne, and that the necessary efforts should be made immediately, and that we should send straws to all our members and gather forces. This fixed it for me. I hoped that you would also be engaged in the work of gathering our strength and that you would come soon. I took our Pavur forces and stationed them on Tirapurambayam hill between Manioth and Kala Dam. Immediately, I sent horse messengers to Mazapadatthan Navan, Mazavarayar, Kundratharg Kiar, Mumyudi Palavarayar, Thane Tongat Kalangarayar, Vanangamudi Thande Atarayar, Devasnadhapadi Favarayar, Anjatha Singha Mutharayar and Dumkudi Kudi Rajaniyar to hurry to write letters. I have written to all of them to gather forces and come back as soon as possible. Elder brother. Don't worry about them. Let's destroy Kajum Valar Velan and Thiru Kovalar Malayaman so that they can't take their head again and let's put Madhurand Hakativar on the Singhatanam, said the young Palyavatarayar with excitement and heard the heroic roar of Day Dumba. But his words did not seem to encourage the great reaper. His attention suddenly turned elsewhere. Brother! Who is that? Who is Vimy crying with her hand on her face? He asked. Brother! Don't you know? He is the youngest queen. Poor thing! He seems to have gone through so much trouble trying to save himself. Forgive me for all I have said of him, brother. I know that the wizard Ravidasan and his companions brought them captive, and that the youngest queen came and saved them. Is that true? Kalanthakandar said. The great reaper said, Yes, yes. It was the younger queen who saved my life. If Nandini had not done her job, you would not have seen me alive. The world would have never known the truth. He said that. The incomparable magnificence of the young queen was unknown to me. How could the world know? Kalanthakandar said. Ignoring this, the great gardener asked, Has Nandini not left here yet? I thought she would have gone with those who went up the cave steps. Said. How could the youngest queen leave them, brother? Said the small gardener. Let it go. How did you find out we were here? Asked the elder. Then he hid and heard some of the conspirators talking together near the Tirapurambayam police force. It was then that they came to know that Ravidasan's gang had captured them and taken them to the Green Hill region. Knowing that Pungazali and Vaishnava Alwarkadian were going to Pasha Hill, he too tried to follow them without their knowledge. After hearing all this, Gandamaran and I took fifty soldiers and left. Sendan Amuthan insisted that he would come too. We tied him on a horse and brought him that it was good too. It came and went well. We have found ourselves. What are you worried about bro? Leave immediately. I will arrange for them to be picked up without any inconvenience. By this time a large army would have gathered in Tirapurambayam. Yes, we must go to Tanjavur immediately. Saying that, the great reaper stood up. Nandini slowly walked towards where Devi was sitting. Nandini, who had been sitting on a rock all the while crying, suddenly stood up after hearing the roar that filled the throat of the great reaper. She looked around with frantic eyes. Alvarkadian, who was standing very close to her, said in a soft voice, Nandini. Say your consent right now, say a word that you will come with me. We will leave this country and go to the north. We will travel to the places of Brindavana, North Madurai, Ayodhya, Kashi, Haridwar, Rishikesh etc chanting the names of Srimanarayanan and singing the hymns of the Alvars. Let's spend our lives happily. I am ready to leave my government post and come with you. Nandini said to him with tears in her eyes, Thirumalai. Even though I have betrayed you so much, your love for me has not changed. You will be blessed by Narayana whom you worship. She said. 
At the same time Punguzali said to Sendan Amuthan, Look! Look at the young queen of Pavur! Doesn't she look like my aunt? She asked. Yes, with the head spread out, it looks exactly like your aunt. Sentin Amuthan said. From now on she is my aunt, from now on I will give the love I had to my aunt for so long to the young queen of Pavur. She said. Add me too, flower girl. Said Amuthan. By this time the great reaper had almost reached the place where Nandini was standing. Seeing this, Nandini prostrated on the ground before him. She touched his feet and admired him in her eyes. After rising from the earth, Nandini took one look at the great reaper and turned away. Her eyes fell on the horses which had been brought by Chinapulvatarayar and others at a little distance. She ran very quickly towards where they stood. She jumped on the horse that stood in front of them all. She held the horse's face rope in her hand and gave it a jolt. The horse galloped and ran. Those who had remained inactive until then, not knowing what Nandini's intentions were, now tried to pursue her. Chinapalyavatarayar, Ashwar Kadayan, Muthan, and Bungazali all took a step ahead. The great reaper shouted hold on. He made a roar. Everyone froze again. They stood looking at the great reaper. The great reaper stood looking at the image of Nandini on the horse. The horse, flying like the wind at high speed, soon turned around a bend in the foothills. The horse disappeared from their sight. Yes, Nandini Devi, the youngest queen of Palvur, has also disappeared. We will not see her again in this story. Maybe years later in a different place, under different circumstances, who can tell?